All right, now let's start with test and create the first test file for the view component. And the first component that we're going to test will be base button component. So inside test folder, I'm going to create folder called components, where I'm going to store all test files related to view components. And then I'll create new file for base button component tests. In here, I'm also going to specify suffix dot spec. This way, vtest will know that this file contains test and it will execute it. So now let's see how base button component looks like in the browser. This base button component is responsible for rendering all buttons in this application. For example, this button is responsible for activity deletion. And as we can see, this component is contained inside another view component called activity item. So let's open up this component in the editor and take a look how base button component is used there. As we can see, it accepts one prop called type. So when using base button component, we can additionally specify the type of the button that we would like to create. And if we'll open up base button component, here we can see a mapping between types of buttons and corresponding CSS classes that have to be assigned to a particular button type. And which of those classes we have to use is determined by the prop called type that by default has type of the primary button. And eventually, based on this prop, we're going to determine which additional classes we're going to have to assign to the button. And then this list of classes stored inside classes constant is used to assign classes to the button element in the template. So now let's describe our first testing scenario. I'm going to switch over to base button spec.ts and use function it. This function we're going to import from vtest library and it is used to describe testing scenarios. And the first scenario will be responsible for checking that primary button is rendered by default if we're not going to specify any type. Let's also import function it from the vtest library at the top. And then the first thing we're going to do in this test is to actually render view component. And to do so, we're going to use function called mount from the view test utils library, which accepts view component that we need to render as the first parameter. In this case, we are rendering base button component, which also has to be imported. Let's add an import for the mount function as well, right here. Then we're going to assign the result of mount function execution to the constant which is usually called wrapper. This will be an object with a variety of useful functions to inspect rendered component. For example, to see the rendered markup of this component, we can call method HTML on this object. And now let's check what will be printed in the console. By the way, in order to make vtest to run only this test, ignoring all the rest, we can use only modifier after it, like so. And we're seeing an error in the terminal saying that document object is not defined. And this is because vtest runs tests in Node.js environment where document object is undefined because it is only defined if our code is going to be executed in the browser. So we have to somehow emulate browser environment in that Node environment. And for this purpose, there are a couple of libraries which allow us to do just that and they emulate browser environment. And one of such library is already installed in the project. It is called Happy Dom. And to make vtest to run certain test file in the browser environment, we can use the following annotation at the beginning of the file called vtest-environment, followed by the library name, which was used to emulate browser environment. In our case, it is Happy Dom library. If we'll take a look inside package.json file, in here we can see that Happy DOM library is already contained in here as a dependency. So it was already installed previously where we have run npm install command. And this time if we're going to execute this test again and check out what was printed in the terminal, we're going to see the full document object. 
So once again, let's try to print out the markup of this component by calling method HTML. And here we go, we're seeing the rendered markup of this component, which is simply a button tag. But as you can see, it does not contain any label yet. That is because base button component accepts label as a default slot. So we have to additionally pass this default slot while we're rendering this component. So to pass additional options to the mount function, we can use second parameter, where we can specify all kinds of different options, such as props, attributes, and slots. In this case, we have to supply default slot. So we're using the key called slots. And inside of this object, we're using the key called default, where we put the content for the default slot of the component. And there we go, now our supplied content has been used as a label for this button. And the thing that we're going to check in this test will be if default slot was rendered properly. And to write expectations, we're using the function called expect that we have to import from the vtest library. This function accepts the value that we are going to check. In this case, we're checking the full markup of the component. And then we're calling the function to contain to ensure that the rendered markup actually contains supplied content as a default slot for this component. And sure enough, if we're going to check test execution again, we're going to see that it passes. But of course, if we wouldn't pass any content for the default slot, the test is going to throw an error. And now in order to not repeat the text for this label, I'm going to create separate constant label and reference this constant in all places, like so. The next thing that we can check in this component will be a list of classes that is being applied to the button, because by default primary button is rendered. If we're not gonna specify a type for this button additionally, that means that the following list of classes that corresponds to the primary type has to be assigned to the button. So I'm going to do the following. Let's copy over these whole classes and create new variable in our test. This will be a constant to be exact with the name primary button classes. And now the way we can check that the appropriate set of classes have been assigned to the button will be to call method classes on the wrapper object. It is going to return an array of all the classes assigned to the button element. Before actually writing any assertions, let's check out what the classes method is going to return. Let's switch over to the terminal. And indeed, we are seeing the list of classes assigned to the button. These are all those classes assigned to the classes constant inside base button component, including specific classes that correspond to the particular button type. I'm not going to check whether all these classes are present on the button, so instead I will check only if specific classes that correspond to a particular button type are present. So let's call method to equal and pass the following expression. Let's call method array containing on the expect object like so. Instead of passing a string, what primary button classes is, we're going to convert it to an array by calling method split. And we're splitting this string by the space like so. And just to make sure that this expression is going to return the expected value, I'm going to print out this value in the console and check it out. As we can see, the first array contains the full list of classes that are assigned to the button element. And the second array is the array of the specific classes that correspond to a particular button type, in this case, to primary button type. The test is currently passing, but if I'm gonna switch over to base button component and uh, let's say I remove one of these classes that correspond to primary button type, sure enough, the test is going to tell us about it and throw an error because there is a missing class that we have just removed. So let's get back to the component and revert this change. We can also verify that if we're going to change default value for the type property, Let's use danger instead of a primary. We're also going to get an error while executing the test. Because now by default danger button is rendered. 
but we are expecting primary button classes. So let's revert all the changes that we have made to base button component, get back to the test, remove all extra code such as this, print statements, as well as only modifier. And now we can run all tests in the project. We can open up the interactive menu by pressing H, and here will be a quick help regarding of which buttons we can use to do certain actions. So for example, to run all the tests in the project, we can press A. So we have successfully written our first test for the view component. Let's continue in the next lesson, and link to the source code of this lesson will be in the video description.